isn't there a problem in making the numbers add up? Don't people have to pay more or take less or work longer? Doesn't something have to change in the current design? Yes, absolutely. Uh, as, as was indicated earlier, you know, now we pay 6 point, the, the employee pays 6.2% of their earnings up to 105000 The employer pays another uh, 6.2% for a total of 124 uh, a proposal is that uh, that that could be increased, uh, that you can increase the, the amount that the employee and the employer puts in. Also, that you could raise that threshold from from 105 to say 120,000, and then funds after 120,000 can be taxed at a lower rate, maybe at a two or three percent rate. Uh, but <clears throat> most all of our analysis indicates that for, in terms of for Hispanics, it would be better to to put more money into the trust fund than to cut uh, benefits. I mean, the proposals there are that we uh, that we uh, not increase the uh, the uh, COLA, which is the uh, 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 cost, sorry, of living cost of living adjustments and so forth, that we do a different calculation there or that we reduce it, make it a fixed percentage and so forth. And all of these will affect the benefits that are paid out. And also there's the proposals of privatizing uh, Social Security, uh, putting our money in the stock market and so forth. Uh, so all of those are different types of, of uh, remedies that can somehow uh, uh, fix this fund. If a Latino worker who's expected to work an average length of time till retirement takes that six and change percent and puts it in a savings account, a money market fund, uh, a conservatively invested mutual fund over the course of their career instead. How, how are they going to do compared with Social Security? Well, first of all, that would be very harmful for the Latino community because we tend to be younger. And so more years to save. Yeah. Well, we, we've already made a promise to the older generation, the seniors, uh, for their retirement. So for a younger person, you would, you'd have to still pay for the current generation retiring while saving. And so you'd really need to pay two retirements. You'd have to pay for the, the, your grandparents while saving for yourself. So it would be extremely detrimental to the, the younger generation. Uh, the other factor is, as I mentioned before, is that we have longer life expectancies. So the, the strong uh, point of Social Security is that you can't outlive it. It's guaranteed income. If you had a private account, you're at the whims of the stock market. And when you get to retirement, you have that challenge of, of making that money last when you don't know how long you're going to live. I would think uh, if, the, if you were to take the 12, it would be 12.4%, uh, not 6.2%, but if you were to take the 12.4 and put it into uh, private accounts and so forth, uh, you may fare, you, you probably are going to fare better than in the Social Security system. But the issue is uh, if, 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 you, if you're not required to save that 12.4%, what's to guarantee that you will be doing that? And then if you do not uh, save that 12.4%, then uh, when you enter into the retirement years and, and, and if you can't work and if you have health problems and so forth, you will become a burden to to society. So I, I think it, that you're, you're not guaranteed that they are going to save that 12.4% in a, in a uh, uh, responsible manner. But the, the partial, problem, pro partial privatization proposals that had been floated in the last story. 10 years didn't involve getting the whole 12.5%. It involved taking some portion of the employee's contribution yeah. and allowing you to make that your own. Right, right now were, you don't have an account, you would have an right. account. And there, and there were a number of reasons for that. One of them was the one that Jeff mentioned. You have to pay current beneficiaries out of current payroll taxes and the other earnings of the trust funds. So you would have had to borrow you all would the have money. Had to, exactly. And in fact, that was part of what, uh, when pr former President Bush proposed private accounts, that was the one little part of his proposal that he didn't talk about much. It was going to cost a trillion dollars in, in new taxes because current workers were going to have to keep paying for current retirees while they were figuring out how to start setting this money aside. The other problem is, in fact, 
and, and your point, when you ask the question, you hit on the key issue. Comparably conservative investments don't actually earn you any more money. Yes, you can make more money in the stock market, and how much money you can make depends on what your risk tolerance is. If you're willing to take a flyer on very, very risky investments, you can make a lot of money or you can lose your shirt. If you want to have the same kind of a guarantee that you would have in the Social Security program, you basically have to put your money in Treasury bonds because that's the only comparably safe investment. Therefore, you're not going to actually end up with any more money than you would in the Social Security program, and you lose the disability insurance part of the program, and you lose the survivor's benefit. So you end up worse off unless you happen to get lucky and you're investing at a time when it's a boom in the market and maybe you do better.